Happy New Year! Now, get back to work. Hello everyone, my name is Roger Kugler. This is Working at Woodworking Podcast, episode number 15. Yeah, that's the title. Happy New Year, now get back to work. Because before we let this year totally slip away, there's a one thing you really want to consider doing in the hours that are remaining in 2021. And I have some items for you to strongly ponder and consider going into 2022. So I'm going to address two different groups. One group, the first group, are you professionals who are in the woodworking business. And the second group are the ones who are still thinking about getting into the woodworking business. So, group one, you pros out there, what's coming up? If you are like myself and people in 44 other states that has a sales tax, you are probably looking at a sales tax deadline coming at the end of January, at least in Indiana. So what does this mean? It means you got to get off your um, <clears throat> uh, your chair and start doing your books. I know I am the only person in the world that doesn't keep their books up to date on at least a monthly basis, let alone a weekly basis. I know I'm the exception, but I do this every single year for the last 20 years. I think it may have something to do with, I was a bookkeeper for about 12 years and Every Monday, I had a routine. I went into the office. I did this. I did that. I had to cut these checks. I had to get these signed. And after 12 years, I think I just kind of revolted when I started to uh, uh, do this this business. Uh, one of the first things I did was decide I ain't got no accounts receivable or accounts payable. I pay for things when I buy them. And I expect payment when I deliver them. None of that 30-day net 2% 10 stuff. Uh-uh. I totally eliminated that. As I try to do as little accounting and bookkeeping as possible. Which means that January is typically a, a rush to the finish line to go through and figure out my state sales tax. And it's really not hard I mean, I keep track of where the money is coming in, and Etsy sends me a very nice report on the money that came in by month, by product. Amazon does the same thing, except you kind of have to hunt for it a little more. PayPal does a very nice job of presenting your yearly activity. So really, the only thing I have to do is go through and collect uh, checks that were paid directly to me and also cash receipts that I received. So don't let this sneak up on you. You don't want to do that frantic 24 hour scramble to try to get this done. I try to knock it out by the, the middle of the month. Okay, number two things pros are going to need to do or I would recommend that you do. Evaluate. This is the dead of winter at least in the Northern Hemisphere. There's not all that much going on. January is kind of a, well, kind of a down month. So this is a really good opportunity to actually dig in to your books, your accounts, and start to figure out which jobs you did during 2021 that made you money. Figure out what jobs you did in 2021 that you lost money on, and someplace in the middle are the jobs that you broke even. Evaluate. Figure out what was good, what was bad, what you never want to do again, and where you might want to be concentrating a lot of your effort on those profitable jobs. 
This is also a good time to look around the shop. Look at your tools. Which ones did you not use this year? Maybe it's time for a little bit of house cleaning. At least see if there's anything in there that you can improve upon. We'll talk more about this a little bit later. Cost of materials sold. It's an accounting term. I try to stay away from it. But you do need to figure out what it costs you to make something. If you've just been kind of on autopilot, you know, cruising through the summer, just trying to get jobs done, trying to find materials, you may not have been paying all that much attention to the prices. Chances are your cost of materials have gone up. I know that I'm paying a lot more for hardwood than I did even last year, let alone the year before. Calculate your cost of fasteners, sandpaper, and your finishes. Have any of these materials gone up in price? The answer is probably yes. Are there other materials that you use in your product or projects? Glass, metal, other pieces and parts. Figure out exactly what those materials are costing and reevaluate your prices. In fact, I'll just say it right now. You need to increase your prices. Period. There, I said it. I don't care if you think the economy is fragile or things are getting so expensive that you're going to lose all of your customers. If you're not in if you are not increasing your prices on a yearly basis, you are losing. Now, why do I say this? This is an exceptional year, I understand. But inflation creeps along at 2, 3, 4% every year. This should not be shocking to anyone. And if you haven't raised your prices on your Twidget in the last 10 years... You are not making as much money as you were 10 years ago, because I guarantee your costs have gone up. And the other good reason for raising your prices, you don't want to get stagnant and in a place five, three, two years from now that you suddenly realize that you are making almost no money on this product and you have to increase the price 50%. Not barring the crazy times that we are in right now, but you don't want to do that to your customers. If there is a gradual increase year over year, your customers are going to understand that. Their rent has probably gone up. Gas prices have probably gone up. Everything tends to go up. So your prices should go up too. I backed myself into a corner several years ago when... One of the products I was making, I realized I hadn't raised the price in like 10 years. Yeah, the wood that went into that product had gone up a little, but, you know, I can eat that. It's no big deal. It's not that much of a price increase. But when I finally realized I needed to do something, my customers were shocked. And whenever I told some of them that I hadn't raised price in 10 years, they called me a dumb So that's kind of where I learned that that lesson from. So while you're at this, I would suggest that you take a little bit of time. After all, it's going to be January. But just take a little bit of time, maybe early in the morning with a hot beverage, or perhaps late at night with your favorite adult beverage. Just sit down in your shop, look around, and just meditate for a few minutes. Look all the way around your shop, 360 degrees. What's working in there? What's not? Which area of your shop is that area? You know the one. The one that you have just kind of piled stuff in that you didn't know what else to do with things. There's a fantastic dust collection in that area. You haven't cleaned that out or been in there for months or maybe years. Maybe it's time you put that 
on your to-do list. Another thing that I would suggest you do is cut 10%. Yes, that's right. Whatever you have been doing this year, if you've been making widgets or twidgets or trebles or ABCs, XYZs, take a look at all of those and figure out what needs to get cut. 10% is kind of a nice round number. It's what the business management books suggest. What is generating a very small profit or maybe no profit at all? What thing do you do, build, make that's kind of turned into a time suck? I had one product that I enjoyed making. It was super simple. Customers seem to absolutely love it, but it was just kind of a pain in the butt for me to do. And the orders would come in at, it seemed like the most inopportune time. When I needed to get this thing over here done, I'd get two orders for one of these. And then, ah, oh, crap, I, I'm out. And so then I'd have to go to the store and buy the materials and bring it home and mill things out and do this and do that and get it to the post office after printing out the receipt and all of this stuff, packaging it up. And it just got to be kind of a pain in the butt. And the final year I had done my evaluation and I looked at how much money I was making off of that product line. You know... It wasn't really that much. And for the aggravation that it caused me, and yeah, it was enjoyable, but not that enjoyable, I just decided I wasn't going to do that anymore. And the next year was very nice without doing that product. Is there something that you do that you really don't like doing? Maybe that's the one that goes onto the chopping block. And is there anything that you're doing that is kind of outside your wheelhouse, so to speak? You know, if you're a professional woodworker, but you're kind of doing this landscaping, you know, gig on the side, maybe it's time to give that up and really concentrate on being a professional woodworker. Those are just some ideas. Everyone is unique. You know your situation better than, well, anyone. So... Give this some consideration. Cut 10%. When you do that, that's going to open up more room in your life, your work life, for something else to fill that. And hopefully that something else is kind of new and innovative, something that you enjoy doing, and something that is even more profitable than what you cut. Okay, I have one more thing for you to consider in your preparations for the new year. Now, I'm not one to make resolutions. Well, actually, I am. I've only made one resolution for New Year's that I've actually stuck to. And that was the resolution to not make any more New Year's resolutions. And for probably the last 10 years, that one I have accomplished wonderfully. So this is not a New Year's resolution, but it's something that I would encourage you to do going into 2022. Make a list. I call mine 2022 list. And this is just a list of things that you would like to accomplish. It's not carved in basswood. If you don't get any or most of these things done, the world's not going to come to an end. Your job is probably still secure, but just things that you really kind of want to do. This could be things like cleaning out that corner of the shop that we talked about earlier. It might be finally buying that new tool, that 10-inch planer, that 12-inch cabinet saw, maybe jump into the fest tool party. Maybe this is the year that you finally get your CNC machine. But just start putting these things down. 
and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Maybe you want to reorganize the shop, rebuild your workbench, paint the inside of your shop, redo the lumber storage rack, anything. Just kind of brainstorm. This is a good thing to do while you're up there doing the the meditation in your shop. Just grab a, a notepad, sit down, and just start jotting some things down. And if you really want to make some of these things come true, share your list with someone. Your spouse, a friend, your pastor, your bartender. Just run this by someone and they can give you some feedback. And, and just the act of talking about this with someone else seems to have some effect on how many of these things you'll actually get done, or so the, the, the scientist tells us. Now, when you have your list picked out, pick three. Three things on your list. Move those to the top. Those are the ones you want to concentrate on first. If you only get three things done on this list, well, for me, that's like a spectacular year. But you might get 10 things done. You might only get one thing done. But you will have done something in the coming year. So to all you professionals out there, best of luck in 2022. Oh, one more thing. This is a really good opportunity to stock up on supplies for the coming year. If you are expecting a, a large profit for the year, you might want to, you know, get some, some more write-offs by going out and purchasing six months worth of sandpaper, or you might be too late for a lumber order, but anything that you can order online, if it looks like you're going to take a loss for the year and you have some cash, you might want to go ahead and order those supplies anyway. That will increase the size of your loss and it will set you up for next year. I always seem to run out of supplies when my cash flow is at the lowest. So if I can do this ahead of time and have those stockpiles in reserve, it just makes things easier down the road. Okay, now I would like to talk a few minutes to those who are in the I'm still thinking about it crowd. You want to start a business. You've been dreaming about this for a while. Perhaps you're a very accomplished woodworker, but you'd like to make some money at this professionally, but for whatever reason, you just haven't yet. So I ask you, what are you thinking about? Why haven't you done this yet? Now, I'd like you to pick up a piece of paper and a pencil or pen, and I want you to list all the things that you have been thinking about. And I want you to do this quickly. Don't think too much about the things that you are thinking about. What is on your mind? What things do you know? What things do you not know? What things scare you? What things make you feel pretty confident that you could actually pull this off? What are the pros? What are the cons? Just get this down on paper. Now, after you've given this some considerable thought, I'd like you to come up with a game plan. And probably the first decision on your game plan is, do I want to do this full-time or do I want to do this part-time? Part-time professional woodworking is a great way to start. In fact, you could be a part-time professional woodworker for the next 40 years. Well, if you live that long, if you're young enough. And that is absolutely perfectly fine. You could be a tremendous service to your community if you did that. If you do have some experience and maybe the time in your life is right, you could become a full-time professional woodworker. But you're the only one who can figure this out. And by getting this down on paper, it kind of solidifies your thoughts. This would also be a good time to go back and listen to podcast 1 through 12, where I talk about the real basics of deciding to go professional. 
in this trade. Then decide. Are you going to go for it? Are you going to forget about this idea? Or are you going to make the decision not now? All three could be very good choices. But you need to decide. 2022 might be the year that you decide. If you choose to go for it, then I would suggest that you get one job. Just one. Not seven. Just one job that is going to pay you money. And then do it. Because that's the start. All right. So that's pretty much of everything I had for you today. I'm not going to do a recommendation of the week. I'm not going to talk about missed jobs because it's been a, a relatively quiet week. Very, very pleasant so far. I've got a couple jobs I need to uh, get finished up in, in the, the mail, so I don't want to hold you up anymore. Remember, this might be the day to order some more supplies, and I won't keep you from your merrymaking on the new year. So, wishing you the very best in 2022. Happy woodworking. <music>